You know, this house could sell for a lot right now. If you don't sell it, you're going to lose out. Let's sell the house and split the money in half. I couldn't help but blurt out, what? At Sophia's excited proposal. I noticed Sophia's face cloud over, but I stood my ground. This house is mine, and I have no intention of selling it. I declared. That's when Sophia started relentlessly harassing me. My name is Michelle. I had no particular desire to get married and was happily living with my mom at our family home. I used to live alone, but moved back after my dad passed away and left my mom all by herself. I was worried about leaving my elderly mom alone, but more than anything, it was heartbreaking to see her so lonely without dad. My mom never pressured me to get married. Whenever you find someone you love, that's good enough for me. She's always saying. I love my job and plan to dedicate my life to it, so marriage was low on my list of priorities. It was a big relief that mom was so understanding about my life choices. I have a brother named Cody. He's married to Sophia, which may be why mom never pressured me to marry. Then one day, Mom went out for groceries and never came back. She left with a smile, only to collapse at the supermarket. By the time I rushed to the hospital after getting the call, Mom was barely hanging on with no signs of consciousness. Please be with her, the doctor could only say. Fighting back panic, I called Cody and Sophia to let them know Mom was critically ill. But Cody said he couldn't leave work and Sophia, who was just at her house nearby, said if Cody wasn't going, she wouldn't either. With mom in critical condition and no one else by her side, I couldn't hold back the tears. Mom had always been kind to both Cody and Sophia. I watched this happen from the sidelines day in and day out. As much as they irritated me, the pain of losing mom overshadowed everything else. Mom... I'm right here with you. I gently held mom's unresponsive hand. To my surprise, she lightly gripped mine back. Could she still be alive? This flicker of hope was short-lived. Mom passed away. At the funeral, Cody took the role of the chief mourner. Though he cried having missed her passing, I couldn't forgive him for prioritizing work over mom when she was critically ill and my resentment for Sophia, Cody's wife, intensified. She skipped the funeral, saying she had to work. Sophia's job was just part-time at a checkout counter. She could have easily taken a leave for her mother-in-law's funeral, but she chose not to, which infuriated me. However, I knew mom wouldn't have wanted her death to cause friction between me, Cody, and Sophia. Biting back my anger, I attended the ceremony. As for the inheritance, with no will left, I decided to keep the house where I lived with mom. All of mom's hard-earned money went to Cody and Sophia, but I didn't mind. Mom's savings were more like her hobby, and I was content just preserving this house filled with memories. That was, until even the house came under threat. A year after mom's passing, Cody and Sophia unexpectedly showed up. We barely kept in touch, mostly around memorial services. When I asked why the sudden visit, they requested to move in. Turns out, Sophia invested mom's inheritance in Forex and managed to accumulate a debt of $50,000. Oh, we can't afford rent while repaying the debt, Cody pleaded. I know it's a lot to ask, but can we live here? Otherwise, Sophia and I might end up homeless. Compared to Cody, who would practically beg me as if his life depended on it, Sophia, the root cause of our debt, simply said, Pretty please? Her expression was as if it was someone else's problem. I didn't like her attitude but couldn't abandon my own brother Cody. So I agreed. Initially, the cohabitation went smoothly. While Cody and I were at work, Sophia took care of household chores, saving us the time and effort, and for that, I was grateful. Sophia was also a good cook which made meals something to look forward to. But Sophia continued her reckless spending habits before I knew it. She had brought home designer bags and started using the pricey lotions and moisturizers that even I had deemed too expensive. 
Every time Sophia spent a large sum of money, Cody would blow up, leading to a huge argument between them. And let me tell you, it was super awkward for me to be in the middle of all that. I couldn't help but wonder why Cody wouldn't divorce Sophia given these repetitive issues. Maybe there's something about marital bonds that I wouldn't understand since I'm not married. So I didn't say anything to Cody. Half grateful to Sophia and half exasperated, life went on until one day, the property value of our home skyrocketed. I started getting calls from all corners asking me to sell the house due to impending development. My answer? A hard no. I had no intention of parting with this house which is filled with memories of my parents until the day I died. But Sophia's attitude took a 180. You know, we can get a good price for this house right now. Right? We would be fools not to sell. We should split the money 50-50. I couldn't help but blurt out, what? When I heard her say this, I was angry that Sophia had the audacity to refer to my precious home as this house and suggest selling it so casually. Then, splitting the money like it's no big deal, my feelings were half anger and half disbelief. This house is in my name. I have no intention of giving it away to anyone including you, Sophia. But we need the money, Michelle, you know that, right? The near tearful expression on Sophia's face only added to my disbelief. The only reason we need money is that you have suffered huge losses in forex trading. When mom passed away, she left a considerable inheritance for both you and Cody. I have zero intention of sharing any proceeds from selling this house with you. Upon hearing this, Sophia's face visibly changed color. Flushing red with a distorted expression, Sophia replied, Fine, I get it. And with that, she walked away. I thought it was going to be awkward living with Sophia, but that concern turned out to be unnecessary. After that conversation, Sophia's nasty acts of harassment began. The first instance involved hamburger steak. Sophia, who is good at cooking, had made her specialty hamburger steak. A dish I also enjoyed. But the moment I took a bite, I felt something crunchy and immediately spit the food out onto a napkin. To my surprise, the hamburger steak was filled with eggshells when I looked at Sophia in disbelief. Is something wrong? She just smiled and asked. As I cut into the remaining hamburger steak with a knife, sure enough, there were eggshells in it. Sophia, I hate to bring this up after you have gone through the trouble of cooking, but it looks like there are a lot of eggshells in this. What? Oh no, I'm so sorry. That wasn't intentional. We are out of ingredients and other things to eat too. I couldn't help but think she did it on purpose. You did this on purpose, didn't you? Sophia said, I really didn't do it on purpose. It's terrible that you don't believe me. And began to cry softly. Just as this was happening, Cody came home, interrupting my attempt to explain. Sophia, still in tears, spun the story in her favor. Cody took Sophia's side, saying it wasn't intentional, and told me, Stop harassing my wife like that. After that, Sophia stated that she didn't want to cook for me anymore and only cooked for herself and Cody. She also said she didn't want to do household chores for someone like me. She only cleaned the common areas like the living room and the kitchen but stopped cleaning my room. I didn't care much about the chores, it was just like when I was living alone. I had only been spoiled by Sophia's help till now, however, I noticed something. The money I kept in my room was gradually disappearing. Convinced Sophia was the culprit, I confronted her. She then turned on the waterworks and said, Michelle is treating me like a criminal even though I didn't do anything. And she looked to Cody for support. Cody, in his own way, wasn't helping either. If you keep harassing my wife, you're going to have to leave. That's what he would say to me. It seemed like Sophia had told Cody a bunch of lies, making him believe I was the one harassing her. Get out? This is my house, I said to Cody. The freeloaders here are you and Sophia. You're the ones who should leave. What are you misunderstanding? This led to a big fight between Cody and me. That night, lying in bed, I actually considered leaving. 
Wouldn't it be easier to leave rather than continue dealing with this daily torment? That's when I remembered mom, who, despite her aching back, would carefully mop the hallways. The house was built by Walter, who worked so hard. We have to take good care of it, she used to say while making the house shine with her cleaning. As the image of my own mother flashed in my mind, I held back tears and thought to myself, I shouldn't be the one to leave, it should be Cody and Sophia. I acted quickly once I decided to kick them out. I went to an electronic store and bought several high-quality small security cameras. While Cody was at work and Sophia was out, I installed the cameras all around the house. I set them up to prove that Sophia was stealing my money and that I wasn't harassing her as a daughter-in-law. After a few days of recording, I reviewed the footage in my room. Sure enough, I had caught Sophia entering my room and taking money. But I had captured even more shocking things. That evening, I gathered Cody and Sophia in the living room. Sophia, being a drama queen, pretended to be scared of me. Cody, believing Sophia's side of the story, was giving me a cold stare. Ignoring their attitudes, I began to speak. Actually, I had security cameras installed in the house. My money has been disappearing and I suspected Sophia was behind it so I wanted proof. Here's the footage. I then played the video on my laptop showing Sophia entering my room and taking the money. The moment Sophia heard the word camera, her face turned pale. Cody, shocked by Sophia's behavior on the laptop, was speechless. The footage clearly showed Sophia as the one taking the money, but I wasn't done. I fast-forwarded the video, and there it was. Footage of Sophia entering the house arm-in-arm arm with an unknown man. Wait, who is this guy? Cody exclaimed while Sophia burst into tears. It was unmistakable that Sophia was cheating. No, 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 this isn't what it looks like, Michelle, did you fabricate this video? I have heard that video technology has advanced a lot recently. I am not a video editor, and I can create such high-quality fake videos, I responded. Engrossed in the footage of Sophia and the unknown man, Cody was aghast. Sophia, on the other hand, Stop the video now! Sophia screamed at me. Amidst this hellish atmosphere, I spoke clearly. Please, deal with the infidelity between yourselves. As for living here, I would like you to move out. I can't live with someone who takes money without permission and uses it for cheating. With a straight face, I pause the video. I hand Cody the SD card with the recorded data. Be out in a month and kick Sophia out immediately. I tell him. Cody, now back to his senses, starts yelling at Sophia. Later, their loud arguments fills the house. Take your fight somewhere else, I say. Cody moves the scene to a diner. Busy calling in the man Sophia cheated with and her parents, Cody sets the stage for divorce. I hear Sophia will be solely responsible for repaying the debts and she even gets a payout from the divorce settlement. Sophia is of course taken back by her parents that night. Her parents had seen the video where I was robbed of my money and they handed me some cash. I don't know if this is enough, but... They say, I accept it as a sort of restitution. Cody had the audacity to ask to stay in the house a little longer after the divorce. I refuse. There is no way I could forgive Cody who was about to kick me out trusting Sophia's words. This is the home dad built and mom lovingly maintained. I can't allow someone who allowed his wife to cheat and wanted to kick me out, the heir, to stay here. I gave you a month out of the last shred of sibling decency. Leave as soon as possible. I say, I didn't want Cody, who never valued this house and never believed me to stay a second longer. Rejected by me, Cody leaves and I have no idea what his life is like now. Cody and Sophia divorce and her parents cover the divorce settlement in a lump sum. Cody manages to get the compensation from the man Sophia cheated with and rents a house far away. I hear that much. As for me, my days return to a peaceful calm without Cody and Sophia. 
The comfort of having the house to myself is unmatched. In the serene quiet filling the home, I gazed at a memorial photo. Facing my parents' picture, I wonder if this was the right thing to do, I murmur. The parents in the photo only offer me their smiles, it's lonely. But I feel they would approve of what I have done. I still get calls asking if I want to sell this house but I have no intention of giving it to anyone until the day I die. Until my last breath, I vow to protect this home.